What's up guys, Ryan here from Mudgunner, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about my Galil setups. Um, I have a couple here. I have an old IMI Galil and I have a modern IWI Galil. They're basically the same company as far as I know, but it, the IMI stands for Israeli Military Industries and IWI stands for Israeli Weapon Industries. I don't know at which point that changed, so um, yeah, just look that up. But relatively speaking, it is the same design, just way updated on the IWI. So we're going to focus on this one today, but I will show you guys this one. So this is a pretty sweet gun. This is an IMI Galil 372. It was imported by Magnum Research. I don't know the exact time frame. I think this would have been like 80s. But the Galil is a beautiful gun, awesome to shoot. Even these old ones are just a dream to shoot. And in many ways, I think it's like an upgraded AK, but they're very AK-ish. Like, I, I don't know the exact time frame. I've looked it up in the past, but I think they were designed around the same time. The Galil probably came after the AK because it very much looks like an AK on the inside. But what's cool about it is one, I like the charging handle a little bit more because it's a little bit easier to get to from up top versus going under or going over. Like you just have it right on top here. Also the safety selector, you have the traditional AK style safety selector, but you also have it right here. So right now it's on fire. If I pull it back, it's on safe, but I think it's easier to put on fire than most guns. You just push it forward and you're ready to fire, which is cool. And then iron sights, it has way better iron sights in my opinion. So you actually have like a peephole rear sight. It's also got a flip up rear sight right here. And then front sight, you have these traditional front sight in there, but then you also have a flip up one. And those flip up sights are also night sights, which I don't think mine are still working, but uh, I think that's pretty cool. Still a long stroke piston system gun. When you take it apart, it looks like an AK on the inside. And then this one, it specifically is a 5.56. They made them in a variety of calibers. Unlike the AK, I mean, there was a couple other calibers, but the Galil, they did it in 308, 7.62 by 39 and 5.56. Mine has a built-in bipod here, which is cool. And then you also have the bottle opener, the famous bottle opener on the bottom right here, which I haven't opened any bottles with this one, but um, yeah, it is a sweet gun. I like the built-in bipod. And I also see this as kind of like an, I also see this as kind of like an Israeli RPK. And the RPK was uh, Russia's light machine gun. So kind of to replace the RPD, which is a belt fed 762 by 39. The RPK was a magazine fed 762 by 39 and yeah, I just think the Galil very much kind of embodies that RPK style. It's not called the RPK, but that's just kind of how I see it. So very cool. It's also got the side folding stock, which I like. And I just think the Galil is a beautiful gun. It's also got a bayonet lug, takes standard AR bayonets, which is pretty cool. It's an 18 inch barrel, but yeah, beautiful gun. I love it. I've shot this one a couple times. I haven't done a standalone video on the channel, but maybe at some point I do a standalone video on this. I have done a standalone video taking this one up to the range. It didn't get that much traction because YouTube demonetized it. But um, yeah, anytime that happens, they tend to not get a lot of views. I think it's because they're like shadow banning it. I will show you guys some shooting clips from that video day. All right, we're gonna just send it. That's so much fun. We lost my uh, M-Lock rail cover here. Um, yeah, just the recoil from the round going off. But this gun, it's so light. I mean, you could dump the round so fast because this ALG trigger, dang, this is sweet. That was a lot. <laughs> But if you want to go see the video, check out my playlist called Demonetized, and that will show that video plus a bunch of others that were demonetized. So this is my IWI Galil. And if you kind of look at the theme, I wanted to turn it into a Galil RPK style rifle. So kind of the light machine gun look, it is not a light machine gun, I understand that. This is a semi-auto rifle, but I wanted it to fit that vibe. And I feel like I've done a pretty decent job doing it. So the modern Galil, very much like the old one. You still have the same style safety, although on the side right here, it's much smaller. Um, you still have the push lever right here, which I really like. So pulling it back is safe, pushing it forward is fire. I like that a lot. They move the charging handle to the left side, which I think is way better for a right-handed shooter specifically. If you're left-handed, that kind of sucks for you guys, but you guys have the AK. So I like the left-handed charging handle, makes it very easy. And then um, since the Galil in general is already a beefy gun, I decided again to make it an RPK style rifle. So I think the Galil shines in 7.62x39. It is cool in 5.56, like the old one's really cool in 5.56, but I do have a modern Galil Ace SAR Gen 1 in 5.56. That one's the eight inch barrel. The thing with them in 5.56 is it's a very heavy gun. And I would say 
It, if you're trying to replace an AR-15, I think it's too heavy and I don't mind weight. Like it really doesn't bother me, but I just have specific setups for it. But in my head, if you're trying to replace a 5.56 AR-15, I would steer you towards the CZ Bren 2 in 5.56 because it's so much lighter than the Galil, but it's just as cool. Like they come with a light two stage trigger. You get a non-reciprocating charging handle. You get piston driven. I think the Galil is way better in 5.56 for that reason of replacing an AR-15. Now, if you are trying to replace an AK, then the Galil is where it's at because it's so much like beefier and it feels more sturdy than an AK, in my opinion, compared to modern AKs. Like old ones are cool too. Like this is a Russian Sega, it's a Russian AK. That one is cool. But the issue with AKs is they're a little bit harder to make more tactical and modular. And what I mean by that is, let's say you wanna put an optic on there. Well, you either have to replace the whole dust cover plus your rear sight to put like the Texas weapon systems rail on there. The side mounted rail options are not the greatest. Um, you can replace the fore end, but then it pushes your optic way out front. Then let's say you're trying to add a light. You really don't have anything that gets the light past the muzzle easily. You'd have to replace the whole front end. So I don't think the AK is very, like it is modular, but it's not very modular, if that makes sense. The Galil on the other hand, um, this is the rail it comes with from the factory. It's an M-lock rail, makes it very easy to attach stuff. You actually have two M-lock sections, like one up top and one right there on the side. So you have two spots where you can put stuff. Now they may not be able to, you may not be able to double stack them, but that's fine. Um, so you could choose your height on the side of the rail because it is a taller rail to accommodate the piston. But I think it allows you to really push that light out much further. So you notice I have a Surefire light on here and I could push it out even further with like a Arasaka or a T-Rex Arms light bar. I just chose not to, but at some point I might because um, this is not the suppressor I'm putting on here, but this is 7.62 by 39 with the Surefire muzzle brake. And I happen to have just gotten today B&T RBS Surefire compatible suppressors. So I'll show you guys a picture I took it at work. So that suppressor, it's a B&T RBS compact suppressor. It's a flow through um, LMG style suppressor. It's kind of beefy meant for guns like this, and it'll attach to a Surefire muzzle device. And I was thinking with this gun, this is stiff. I need to clean the suppressor. It's been running on my SCAR 16, but this is a Surefire 7.62 Mini, but you notice it was pretty tight getting on there. Um, this can, not that it's not rated for 7.62 by 39, it is, but it's not rated to be like an LMG style suppressor with a 75 round drum. So I figured, and it doesn't even match, I figured with that B&T suppressor, it would look awesome on here. And I think that picture shows that it does. So that is a beefy suppressor. But again, I think it just really fills the vibe of having this be an LMG style gun. I keep saying LMG, I understand that it's semi-auto, but hopefully you guys get what I'm trying to say. So again, RPK style gun suppressed, a modernized RPK with that B&T suppressor that's compatible with my Surefire muzzle brake. I think that'll be awesome. It's flow through, it's not gonna be the quietest, but it's kind of meant to be a reduced back pressure suppression device. So it's gonna suppress the noise. It, hopefully it suppresses the flash a little bit. I do think they are gonna be a little bit flashier because it's flow through, it's more open. I did watch all of 1911 Syndicate's video on that suppressor. Now the one that they had in their video, they were running it on a saw and it wasn't the Surefire compatible one, but it's gonna be very similar. So this is 7.62 by 39. It's gonna be semi-auto, not full auto but I do have the 75 round drum and I'll probably dump it a couple times. So I'm not the type to just mag dump after mag dump. I kind of think it's pointless for the most part. If I had access to a full auto and it wasn't my ammo, different story. But yeah, for my guns, I, again, I want to set it up for a specific style of role, but I understand the chances of it ever fulfilling that role are very unlikely. Like I'm realistic guys. I just like the vibe of that gun. So hopefully you understand that, but yeah, again, I think the B&T suppressor will be really cool on here. I think I'm hoping it shoots pretty well. I don't expect it to be the quietest. Like it's not gonna be quieter than my 5.56 cans, I assume, but it'll be pretty nice. This thing is dirty, come on. See, it's getting kind of stuck. I need to clean the inside of that suppressor, but yeah. And then the other thing is, let's say I suppress it. I think at that point, my plan originally was just to have this be a fun gun and you know, I didn't care about the optic, but I think if I'm gonna put the suppressor on there, um, obviously that makes it a pretty expensive setup between the BNT suppressor, the gun itself, um, the Surefire light, the Atlas bipod. I originally threw this Holosun laser and optic on here because I didn't have any other gun to put it on. And I always just saw this as kind of just a fun range toy. But at that point you're getting into some serious capability. So I'm thinking I'll probably replace this Holosun with a Neotech. But now this is just kind of in my mind that Holosun are cheaper optics. I'm not saying it's not a capable optic, like I've never had any issues, but it's kind of in my mind that, you know, EOTech, Trigicon, Aimpoint are those military grade optics and I don't see Holosun as that. But that is just me telling you guys I'm probably gonna replace it with an EOTech for the vibe of the look. 
And it kind of goes into like, you'll see someone buy a $2,000 gun, throw a hundred to $200 red dot on there. That's basically what this is. This is an $1,800 gun with a $200 red dot or green dot. This one's actually green. Um, so it doesn't fit the look. It's kind of like having cheap rims on an expensive car, but if those rims work, then, you know, there's that. So this red dot or this green dot specifically does work really well. I've shot it a couple times now. I've shot it with the laser. It's fun, but I think to kind of fit the overall looks, I am going to replace it most likely with an EOTech. So I don't need any magnification. So I think an EOTech will really fill that role, but then this Holosun will just live on something else. So I'm not crapping on Holosun. I do think it's a cool optic for the money and I've never had any issues. I have another AK with a Holosun on there, works fine. This one's an aim point, so I have no issues with that either. But um, yeah, some of the cheaper optics do look off on expensive guns, so I understand that. But I do think I'm gonna keep the laser on here just because it's fun. And let's say, again, this is a fun range toy for me. If I brought out people, or let's say it's low light, I put the drum mag in there, I have my BNT suppressor on, and I have one of the brightest screen lasers available on the civilian market that thing would just be fun to turn on and it's accurate, just dump whatever target we're trying to shoot at. So um, I think the laser is going to stay on there. I think I'm going to replace this with the Neotech. But yeah, other than that, I got the Atlas bipod on there. That's solid. I mean, that's an expensive bipod and it works well. I have, I think this is a Samson grip. I don't even know. It's kind of like an HK style grip, but it's metal, it's aluminum, and it's rock solid. It doesn't have a brand on there, but I bought that used to our store. This Surefire light is kind of anemic. It's one of the older ones. Um, yeah, it doesn't have a lot of throw. This would be pretty cool with a Surefire Turbo. And then if I push it out on a light bar to get past the suppressor, I think it'd be even cooler. And then on the rear end, it has a KNS like lower trigger guard. It's like a metal trigger guard. It's got an ALG trigger, which makes it shoot extremely fast. I'll show you guys the clip here again. All right, we're gonna just send it. And then it's running a B5 AR style pistol grip and a B5 stock. And then I have a Viking tactic sling. So that is the setup on it. Again, it's a 16 inch barrel. So it's not like anything longer like an RPK, but I do really think it looks good with that roll. So it looks really good with the drum mag. And then you guys probably have seen this ridiculous mag on the couch. Um, sorry, our girlfriend's getting home. You guys have probably been staring at this ridiculous mag on the couch. This is the mag that got my YouTube channel famous, guys. This mag has 11.8 million views on YouTube. It was my third YouTube video, but my very first gun video. I posted it in a Sentry Arms AK. The title of the video is World's Longest AK-47 Mag, and that is it. Now it's the World's Longest Galil Mag. I think it only holds like 50 rounds, but it works pretty flawlessly. I've only used it like two times over the years, but this thing is sick. I think it'd be pretty funny to shoot on this gun. I might do that in my next video with it. Looks ridiculous, I know. Again, I think it's only like 50 rounds. It's like three welded AK mags. Also hitting the bipod trying to get out. But a 75 round drum mag is way more practical. And then I don't have any like pouches for drum mags. I do have extra drum mags. I have this pouch. I keep five loaded AK mags in here. They're actually Bakelite mags. It's not the quickest to open because you have to undo this little button right here. And then you have to do this one right here. But now I have five fully loaded Bakelite mags. So cool little pouch, but this is like the only AK style mag pouch I have. I don't really have anything else for a kit loadout, but I think it'd be cool to get some type of chest rig or something that holds like two AK drums. But you figure this is 150 rounds plus the 75 round drum. So, I mean, that's most of a loadout right there, but, and then I guess while we're at it, we'll talk about the AK. Cause again, this is a 16 inch barrel. This is a 16 inch barrel. I do think the Galil really does shine at replacing an AK. I don't think it shines at replacing an AR because of the weight at that point. Again, I would go like the CZ Bren 2 or something else like a SCAR, stuff like that. But the Bren and the Galil are both about 1800 bucks brand new. So that's why I think they're comparable. The Bren would replace an AR, the Galil would replace an AK. But you can't be a traditional AK. Again, this is a Russian Sega. I like it, shoots good. It is more like modernized or tactical. It's got a Midwest Industries rail. It's got an aim point on here. It's got an AR style buffer tube setup or like just stock setup. It's a fab defense. This is how it came to me. I don't care about it too much because there's a spring in here. So every time you shoot, it like compresses and it bounces. And I don't like it because it makes the red dot jump a lot. But um, yeah, I just haven't felt the need to change it. But it does shoot nice. It's got a muzzle brake. And uh, yeah, it'd be kind of annoying to put a light on here. So I never have. I'm running a Magpul MS3 sling. I think it's the MS3. 
but it's got the little paraclip thing right here and then a QD point in the stock. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I have going here. So I'm pretty excited about that suppressor. I don't know how soon you guys will see it on the channel. I'm working on a couple things right now. I am working on an actual RPK right now, so I'm excited about that. So I'll have a Galil style RPK and then I'll have a legit RPK. Uh, the RPK is the Meridian Defense Apocalypse War, so I'm excited. Um, for those of you that know, Meridian Defense is a pretty nice AK company. I don't have any firsthand experience with their guns, so this will be my first time. But hopefully you guys like my Galil setup, and if not, hopefully you at least like the old school IMI Galil, because those are hard to get and getting more and more rare by the day. It's got the 35 round 5.56 mag, and other than that, I think it'd be cool to get that in 308. But again, they're extremely expensive and rare. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for my next video.